Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines we have here at the Basilica to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times in the church. We will not have a collection at this mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and the exit of the church. You can use your envelopes to donate, or you can donate online on our parish website at thebasilica.church, or you can mail or drop off your donations to the parish office and receive a tax receipt. The donations pay for live streaming for the utilities and salaries of the parish so our parish can keep operating. Thank you for continuing to support the Basilica Parish. At the time of communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to follow the usher's directions for leaving the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt, and our entrance chant is number 385, Christ the Lord is risen today. Please stand and join us. <clears throat> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Sometimes at our Sunday Mass, uh, we'll have uh, little children crying. If you hear anybody sobbing today, it's probably not going to be a child. It's going to be a Leaf fan crying that they're out of the playoffs again. We come together as people of faith to give God praise, to thank Him for all His gifts, and to ask for His assistance in our needs that we may worthily offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, we pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. 
constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barabbas returned to Lystra, then on to Iconum and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord, in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pasida and came to Pamphylia, where they had spoken the word in Perga. They went down to Attila. From there they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done for them and how he had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 145, I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. Slow to anger and abounding in stead. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, See, the home of God is among humans. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During the supper, when Judas had gone out, 
Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In our second reading today, John speaks of the vision that he has in which God says, I am making all things new. And he speaks about the new, the first, the new heaven and the new earth. And in the gospel passage today, Jesus gives to the apostles a new commandment, which helps to make all things new, which is the basis for making all things new, that we are to love one another as he has loved us. And that's the mandate that we're given as Christians, to seek to embrace the love that God has given us and then to share it, to emulate that love in our dealings with one another. One of the commentators that I read uh, on today's readings uh, reflected on the love of Christ that we're called to have and he noticed different characteristics of that love. He said he noticed that first, the love of Christ was grounded in his father's love for him. And it made me think of a couple of teachers, a husband and wife uh, who taught in an inner city school, who told me that uh, over 70% of the students they taught were from single family homes. And that sometimes when they would speak to the children about uh, a father's love, the love of God the Father for us, some of the children would have a blank look on their face. They had never experienced a father's love in their own life and so could not comprehend the concept. The love that we are called to share with one another, we first need to receive. And God shares that love with us and, and so does our family and those who are close to us. People that often we take for granted and yet have such a special role, such, such a special vocation in our lives. This commentator also noticed that Jesus loved everyone and that his love was unconditional and that his love was a sacrificial love. And speaking about that sacrificial love, he relates a story about a mother whose young daughter uh, has uh, problems with her liver. Her liver isn't working right and the mother donates uh, a part of her liver for a liver transplant for the girl. And as they're preparing to put the mother under to uh, have the operation, uh, somebody says to the mother, do you have any regrets? Do you have any second thoughts? And the mother said, when you have already given someone your whole heart, a little piece of liver is no big deal. Uh, like that mother with her child, God has given his whole heart to us. And so the sacrifice of himself on the cross was he gladly did and was just a, a natural continuation of that love. The commentator also noted that the love that Christ shared was usually shared in very ordinary things. And he pointed out the fact that that's the way love is, that there are exceptional times, but generally it's something that we're called to do in our ordinary daily life. He said, most of us would be more willing to share our love in spectacular ways but while we dream of the great opportunities, life passes and the little deeds of love go undone. Life is made up mostly of little things, such as kind words, warm smiles, common courtesy, nice attitude. They are the little things that make a big difference. If we do not love in little ordinary things, we may not have true love in our hearts at all. When I read that, it reminded me of a, a story that uh, Thomas Green, a Jesuit spiritual writer, uh, shares in one of his books about how we're called to love in ordinary ways and that 
Sometimes we miss the ordinary to do things, wanting to do something special and forgetting it's in the little things that are important. And he uses an example. Uh, he was a professor at a seminary in the Philippines and he had many Filipino friends. And when his birthday was coming up, those friends wanted to get him something for his birthday and they asked him what he would like. And uh, he liked uh, strong cheeses, so he said that he'd love to have some Limburger cheese for his birthday. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Limburger cheese, but it's very stinky. And Filipinos, my understanding is, aren't into cheeses and smelly things. And anything that smelled like Limburger, they'd be thrown in the garbage, not given to somebody for his birthday. Uh, and th when he relates the story, he says, like, that's what he really wanted. That's what it would have been really special to get. And his Filipino friends gave him many nice gifts, but they didn't give him what he really wanted. And I think that's the challenge in our lives as well. You know, we, we want to do loving things, but sometimes the loving things are things that we really would rather avoid, uh, things that in some ways may be stinky to us, or involve um, doing things that uh, aren't so easy to do. And yet that's where the love is really shown, is when we do those ordinary things uh, and, and are aware of the, the true yearnings of other people's hearts and we reach out to them in love. In the Mass, we celebrate how much God loves us and we celebrate specifically the extraordinary ways that God has shown us his love by giving his life for us on the cross, by giving us in the sacrament of the Eucharist his body, blood, soul, and divinity. But in celebrating those things, we're reminded that love is something that needs to be shared daily and shared in small and ordinary ways. And as we come to the Mass, we're invited not only to celebrate God's love, but to allow God's love to nourish us and inspire us and guide us as we go forth from here, so that like him we may be loving in extraordinary ways when those come up, but in the ordinary things of daily life. And like him, to love everyone, to love unconditionally, to love sacrificially, and to love in the ordinary things of life. God bless you. Let us stand and profess our faith in the God of love using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, let us offer to him now our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for Peter, our Archbishop, that the Holy Spirit may give them the grace and the courage to be faithful witnesses of the Word of God in difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Archdiocese, as we continue the process of restructuring and renewal, that the Holy Spirit will gift us with courage and wisdom during these times of challenge and change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of listening and for a spirit of discernment, as we prepare for the 2023 Synod of Bishops, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may always care for the earth, 
God's creation, our common home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in Ukraine and in the Middle East, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing power of the Holy Spirit for all the sick, we pray especially for Ross Penny, Augustus Collett, and we pray for all those who are continuing to be affected in body, mind, and spirit by the ongoing pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in our archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our departed loved ones. And we pray especially for our recently deceased, Luis Foley, Marie Hako, and Joni Wilkins, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands and the praise of the Lord with his name, for our Lord, 
O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we have become God's children and so with confidence we can pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter distance in the communion line. As you approach the line, sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. After responding, Amen, and after receiving Holy Communion, please step aside to consume the host and return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. I invite you to please be seated for a moment. Good morning. Dear parishioners, since late January, a lot of reflection, prayer, discussion, and work has been ongoing. The parishes of the Basilica, St. John Bosco, St. Patrick's, and St. Pius X were asked by Archbishop Hunt whether they could envision themselves uniting to create one spiritual home for the Catholics of the central area of the city and if so, whether they could reach consensus regarding a place of worship and pastoral activity to gather, celebrate the sacraments, and reach out to the wider community. The task was daunting, and there were many factors to balance, consider, and respond to in a very short time frame. A steering committee was struck, made up of representatives from each of the four parishes along with the three parish priests, and met a number of times. Through a process facilitated by the Redemptorist Adult Faith Formation Team, the representatives of the four parishes began to build a common vision of one faith community in the central area of the city. And the kinds of outreach, evangelization, and celebration we might do better together than we could do as four separate entities. We then began to explore which, if any, of the existing churches might best be the home to this amalgamated church community. This was a difficult process. It is natural for people to have an attachment and love for their own parish church. At the same time, we recognize that we do not have the resources, financial or human, to sustain four separate parishes or churches as viable separate entities. We felt that we could become one parish cluster, but we could not afford to repurchase any of the four churches through the call for proposals process initiated by the trustee. We have been approached by the Basilica Heritage Foundation who met with the steering committee to propose that they would move toward purchasing the Basilica block, making the Basilica available to lease. But they would only do this if it were the desire of our four parishes to have it, at, have it as the spiritual, liturgical, pastoral home of the central area of the city, and if it were maintained as the cathedral. The Basilica Heritage Foundation is a registered Canadian charity which has, has existed since 1998 to preserve and interpret the Basilica, including mounting capital campaigns to support major projects. In this current effort, they have entered into a partnership with St. Bonaventure's College, Inc. and the St. Bonaventure's Forum. The steering committee reached a consensus that they would be willing to create one new parish that would celebrate, educate, and reach out from the Basilica. There is no guarantee that the proposal of the Basilica Heritage Foundation, Inc., working in partnership with St. Bonaventure's College, Inc., and the St. Bonaventure's Forum, will be successful in their efforts to purchase the Basilica block and make it available to us as their tenant. Nevertheless, we are grateful for this new possibility, for the hope and the continuity it offers to us. As we await the outcome of the bidding process, 
we invite you to pray and to begin to dream of the new pastoral initiatives that might be possible if the Basilica were to become the home of the amalgamated Catholic community of the central area of the city. We will be in touch again once the call for, for proposals process has concluded. In the meantime, please pray for the courage, vision, and unity to embrace this new opportunity. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact one of your steering committee representatives or parish priests. In Christ, the St. John's Center Steering Committee. Thank you. As you know, we're in the middle of a uh, tender package time. Uh, the Basilica, as well as all of the churches uh, in the Greater St. John's area, with the exception of the Catholic Church out in, uh, on Bell Island, uh, are part of that tender package. And uh, the bids need to be in by June the 2nd. So shortly after June, June the 2nd, we'll know uh, what uh, uh, churches have been bid on and uh, who the uh, new owners uh, would be. Uh, they'll have to be, the trustee will have to present this to the representative council for the claimants, and the court will have to approve uh, any sales that are made. So the hope is that the Basilica Heritage Foundation uh, will be successful and that uh, uh, the, the Basilica will continue to be available uh, for our use as the church in the center section of the city. But we'll have to see how that uh, works out. Um, at the end of the letter, it says you can contact your parish priest. Uh, Father Critch has just escaped to Florida for two weeks. Uh, he didn't go because of this. Uh, he booked it ahead of time. He has a brother who's a priest in a parish down in Florida, and he's gone for a couple of weeks, uh, much, uh, much deserved uh, relaxation. Uh, so he'll be back in a couple of weeks. I invite you to please stand now and to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God, do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 563 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Sing a new song, 563.